precious word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter number 13 and verse number 15. The way. Amen. Now, Proverbs Jesus. chapter 13 and verse number 15. This one uh, scripture I want to uh, preach on this morning. The way of the transgressor. The word says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. Good understanding, good knowledge, living a righteous life. All these things bring favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. You may be seated this morning. A transgressor is someone who has broken the law. Simply put, it's a sinner. Now, I know that Paul would write in the book of Romans that we're no longer under, uh, bound by the law, but we're under grace. But Jesus said it this way. He said, I've come not to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill the law. We're no longer under ceremony, uh, ceremonial uh, things that, that the Jews had to do, but we are still bound by the moral laws of the living God. And if one transgresses in one point of the law, for we have transgressed in all points of the law. Someone shout amen. A transgressor is simply someone who has broken the laws of God. In the book of John, 1 John chapter 3, and verse number 4, the word said, whosoever committed sin has transgressed the law. For the breaking of the sin itself is a transgression of the law. Isaiah would put it this way in Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 20 and verse number 21 he would say but the wicked are like the troubled sea when he cannot find a rest whose waters are full of mire and dirt and there is no peace saith the Lord to the wicked the way of the transgressor is hard to know God is to know peace to not know God is to never find peace the world thinks that it's looking for peace. The world is calling for peace. The Middle East is begging for peace. Uh, Christians are asking for peace. Uh, Muslims are asking uh, for war and peace at the same time. And many societies and many cultures, uh, the word is peace. Uh, but can I tell you, there'll be no peace uh, to the wicked. There'll be no peace to the transgressor of the law. For those who break the law shall die by the law and shall be judged by the law. Somebody shout amen with me. The life of a sinner is hard. Oh, I don't think so, Pastor. Oh, I tell you, ask the alcoholic's family how hard their life is. Ask the one who's doping up how hard their life is. Ask the family of the one that's been doping up how hard their life is. Ask the gambler who's Ask them how hard that life is. Ask the sinner how hard the life is to live in sin. But there is pleasure, but it is for a short season. Somebody shout amen with me. Hallelujah. Ask the husband or the wife who's sitting home and is a faithful husband and wife and has an uncommitted, unfaithful husband or wife. Ask that family how hard life is. The way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the sinner is hard. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter number 9 and verse number 18. He said wisdom is better than the weapons of war. Hallelujah. But a sinner, not a sinner. I misquoted there. But one sinner destroyeth much. Can I tell you it don't take much but for one sinner can bring down a household. There can be a war in the home. Hallelujah. There can be war on your job. A sinner can bring much strife and be a thorn in the side to a Christian. I say let's turn it around. I say let's make the Christian the one that's the thorn in the side to the sinner. Let not one person be able to get around us without feeling the conviction of the Holy Ghost that's working inside of us uh, and let them be convicted, be driven to their knees uh, and be saved. Yes, Hallelujah. 
I want to take a couple of Bible examples this morning. I want to look at just a few people that are on the way of the transgressor. It don't take very long. And you can look at the beginning of time. Shortly after Adam and Eve. And you find a man by the name of Lot. Now he is a nephew of Abraham. Abraham was a man of great wealth. The word of God in the book of Hebrews describes Abraham as a friend of God. God loved him and he loved God. And he spoke with God and saw God on many occasions in an earthly form. Oh, but I hear a man by the name of Lot. The story is told in Genesis chapter number 13, verse 10 through 13, where the Bible says that Lot and his herdsmen could not get along with Abraham and his herdsmen. And look, Abraham would look at Lot and say, everything that you see, if you take the right hand, I'll go to the left. And if you take the left hand, I'll go to the right. And Lot began to look with the natural eyes. And what did Lot see? He saw the beautiful plains of Egypt. He saw the well waters of the cities towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And he chose that which looked better. Because you see, when we look in the natural eyes, everything looks wonderful. But when we take off the glasses and we begin to look in the spiritual eyes and begin to judge the things that are in the spiritual, when we put the glasses back on, it's a different picture than what we thought. I saw the beautiful plain, uh, the watered plains of Egypt and Solomon and Gomorrah. And he said, that is the way I will go. And he pitched his tent uh, toward Sodom. The Bible says, uh, amen, hallelujah. Lot chose those plains. Uh, you see, though, but you can't live close to the world without getting into the world. The closer you get, uh, the further in the world will suck you in and pull you into its vacuum. But Abraham, being a righteous man, he chose that which did not look so beautiful in the flesh. But God blessed him anyway. There were many hills and many valleys. But God always took care of Abraham because Abraham was a man that sought after God and it was imputed for him for his righteousness, his faithfulness. The next chapter, chapter number 14, tells us that there's a battle. You see, the weight of the transgressor is hard because a lot's over there in the beautiful plains but you see the world saw the beautiful plains as well and there's a great battle a lot in his entire family are taken hostage and they're going to be put over into the enemy's camp and they're going to be held hostage oh but there was somebody praying my lord listen to me somebody was on their knees and all Abraham caught wind that his nephew was in trouble and here he with his herdsman and he marches in and he rescues Lot and not only did he rescue him but he slept the enemy and he fell down right there and he began to worship God. Those beautiful plains attracts the world to hallelujah and in verse 14 he's rescued hallelujah and everything starts looking a little up but I want to remind you oh the pleasures of sin are for a season. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, Lot's life turned from, from worse to even worse. If that even be a word. But here it gets bad and badder and badder in Lot's life. We're over in chapter number 19. And the Lord, amen, would say he would remember Abraham. The Bible said the Lord looked down toward the sons of men and saw the wickedness of Solomon and Gomorrah. Oh, wait a minute now. I didn't know Lot was over in there. But you see, he started out in the plains. But now Lot is no longer just looking at Sodom. He is in Sodom. In fact, he's not only in Sodom, he's at the city gates. Can I tell you, the city gates were only where prominent rulers could sit. It was the first look a visitor's got when they come in. One commentary wrote that Lot was one who was passing out the literature telling of the events that was going on within that city. Oh, but Abraham, the Bible said that God said, Shall I hide this thing from my servant Abraham? Abraham was praying for Lot. And here come three angels. One being the angel 
gospel of the Lord, the word says, uh, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ didn't make a grand appearance uh, in the book of Matthew, Mark, or Luke, or John. He visited earth quite often and showed himself many times to many different people. And here Jesus comes uh, with two of his war angels. Uh, and he comes into the tent uh, where, where Abraham was. Uh, and the Bible said that Abraham saw them afar off. Uh, and he ran unto them and bowed himself and worshipped them. He knew exactly who they were. And the Lord looked at him as the two other angels went towards Sodom. He said, I'm going to destroy that city. And Abraham tried to reason it with God and said, we can find 50 righteous. Will you save them? Oh yes, Abraham, I'll save for 50. How about 40, God? Because you couldn't find 50. 30, 20, 10. What about that Lot had a family. He had two sisters, or two, he had brother, two daughters, he had two son-in-laws, and he had a wife. That is six people. And God said, I will spare it for five. But God could not find five righteous in the wicked city. Abraham said, spare him. Spare him. Don't take him out. Spare him and his family. Somebody got another prayer for him. Somebody touched the Lord. They didn't know I was preaching this, but they got the perfect song just right. Somebody interceded and sweet redemption came. My Lord. Hallelujah. If that's not confirmation, I don't know what is. Somebody shouted. Hallelujah. Abraham was on his knees praying. God save my nephew. God don't let him die. And all of a sudden, the Bible says uh, that two angels came uh, into the city gate. Uh, and there they saw Lot. Uh, and Lot knew who they were and took them to their house. Uh, but the men of the city came uh, and knocked on the door and said, Where are these two men? Uh, you see, Solomon and Gomorrah are known for homosexuality. They were a lot like a modern day. Uh, maybe San Francisco, probably a lot worse uh, uh, than what it is in San Francisco. But these men wanted to know the angels that came with them. They wanted to get to know them intimately. Oh, but the Bible said the angels came and smoked with blindness. Uh, the men that had came out uh, and they led them out. Uh, oh, but I want to tell you another thing. Lot so deep in sin, he's trying to reason with the angels. And the word of God said, the angels spoke in the lot and said, you and your family's got to get out. But the morning came. Yes. In Genesis 19 and 14, the morning came. The word said, and Lot went out. And he spake to his son-in-laws, which married his daughters. I want you to pay attention to this. And he said, get up out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one who mocked. You see, when you start dibbling and seeing your testimony don't mean very much. When you get lost to this world, the, the, the world don't care about your testimony. They looked at him as one who mocked. I can just picture the conversation now. We've got to get out, boys. God sent two angels to me last night. And he said that they were going to destroy that city. And they looked at him and said... Why so religious now? You haven't been religious this whole time. In fact, you've been helping us in the city. You've been passing out pamphlets and leaflets. You've been promoting the city of San Gamar. Who are you to tell us what to do? They looked at him as mocked. They stayed in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. But then something crazy happened. In verse number 15 of that 19th chapter, the Bible said, And the sun arose, the morning came, and the angels hastened Lot to leave. You think about this. The angels, they, he had all night to ponder what was going to happen. But the angels hastened. Underline the word hasten in the Word of God. 
That means they hurried him up. You see, Lot's heart was still in Sodom. He knew that the God was fixing to destroy that city, but the angels had to push him. Come on. you got to hurry up and get out. And he hastened They're halfway home. And the Lord had told them, the angel said, don't look back. No matter what you hear, do not look back. And you know the only time Jesus said to remember somebody, it was remember Lot's wife. You see, when she was walking, she heard the screams undoubtedly coming from the hellish place of Sodom and Gomorrah. But you see, Though she could be removed from Sodom physically, her heart was still The Bible said she looked back. And she turned to a pillow of salt. She looked back. Jesus said he could put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for my kingdom. The way of the transgressor is hard. Lot's lost his wife. He's lost his two sons. He's lost the home that he loved. He no longer was a herdsman. He lost his occupation. He had nothing left. And we find the end of Lot's story. He's in a cave. And his two own two daughters got him drunk and knew him. And both of them wound up pregnant by their own father. This is where the Moabites and the Amorites came and they would be a future thorn and the flesh and they still are of Israel today. To the descendants over in Saudi Arabia they came from Lot. And they're still warring against God's holy people Israel. You see what looking back does. One. Give you one more example. I'm trying to hurry. Over in the book of Judges, we hear the story about a wonderful man by the name of Simpson. The way of the transgressor is hard. We hear about Samson, and Samson was dedicated to the, the uh, to the Lord in the wound of his mother. And they said, this son shall be a Nazarite. No razor shall come upon his head. And he shall never drink a strong drink nor a drink of wine. He shall be consecrated unto the Lord. He's given unto the Lord. And great strength was given unto Samson. And because that razor was never put to his head, he had very long hair, but that's where his strength was at, was in his own hair. <laughs> And the word tells us that Samson, in one battle, slew a whole entire army of the Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. Great strength was in old Samson. He searched and he found out. But you see, the way of the transgressor is hard. In the 14th chapter of Judges, we find Samson looking over at the Philistines. Oh my! Hallelujah. In Judges 14 in verse number 1, the Word of God says that Samson looked over into the army of the Philistines and saw a woman and he lusted after her and he said, I must have her. And the, his godly father said, is there not one of our kind that ye shall be with? And he said, no, this woman pleaseth me. You see, the way of the transgressor is hard. Here he goes looking with the natural eye. And he sees something that he thinks looks good. But it's unclean. It's not of God. And here Samson goes in the way. And he marries this un, or this heathenistic girl. And the word of God said the marriage lasted for only seven days. And Samson soon saw who she really was. And he left her. 
But after he left her, he saw and began to want her even the more so. And the word said, Samson came back unto this woman. But her father had given her to one of Samson's friends. What a blow that must have been. Can you imagine one of your friends taking your wife? What a blow it was to Samson. But if you continue reading on, the word said, But he met a woman, a harlot, and her name was Delilah. And he lay in her lap and began to take her. My Lord, the way of the transgressor is hard short. She found out his strength was in his hair. They cut his hair off. And by the end of the chapter 14, he is bound. He is blinded. In fact, the word said they plucked his eyes out and made a mockery and a spectacle of him in the arena. So they would hit him and smoke him and say, Where is thy strength? And who is thy God, O Samson, that he has forsaken you? And they would take a big stand you a bell and put before Samson and push him to his knees and say this is the God who I should have worshipped. The way of the transgressor is hard. He is in prison. He has in binds and chains and the Bible said they took feathered brass and chained him with them that he may have not escaped these things. And the word tells us at the end of the 14th chapter that Samson prayed unto the Lord. His hair grew long and he led his way to a man and said can thou put in my hands upon the temple mounts that I may rest upon them. And right there the word says he hollered out. He cried out to God and said Lord give me strength one more time that I may slay thy enemies and make of thee the Lord of heaven forever be known and the supernatural super ability of God begin to channel this way through Samson. And the Bible said he pushed on those pillows and the arena fell and collapsed and Samson killed more in his death than he did in his life. The way of the transgressor is hard. Proverbs chapter number 14.